Hey, it's time for TV Skywriter. Good day, everybody, and welcome to TV Skywriter. I'm Pat Murray. I publish the Durham Skywriter, this Durham, North Carolina's online community paper. And with TV Skywriter, I try to introduce you to people that I think you should know. So today we have three represent representatives from the NAATPN, and that stands for National African American Tobacco Prevention Network. We have Shante Keith. We have Michael Scott, and we have LaTroya Hester. And Hi. LaTroya is in Atlanta. The rest of us yes. are here in Durham. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you for having us. Very happy to have you. Now, I thought that smoking was on the downturn. Um, apparently, there's still issues with African Americans, and I'd like to know if the issues are somehow different for us than the rest of the American community? Let, let me know. What's going on with smoking and Black people? Sure. Well, first, let's, let's, let's do a, just a little brief introduction about NAPTIN, who we are. Okay. Um, Shante. Please, please. Shante, you sure. Wanna... Thank you, Patricia, for having us. Um, NAPTIN, um, as you stated, stands for the National African American Tobacco Prevention Network. We are, um, as you stated as well, a national nonprofit that's located right in Durham, North Carolina. And we were founded about 20 years ago um, in the year 2000 to address the disparate impact that tobacco use has on the black community. And we've certainly been fortunate since that time to not only tackle tobacco use, but also cancer disparities as well as HIV in our community. Um, and so essentially we are a a CDC funded network. And what that means is that the CDC, as well as a lot of federal agencies have tons of information, um, data, research, um, toolkits, campaigns, and these messages and research and data and information oftentimes don't get down to the communities that really need to hear the information the most. Mm -hmm. So NAPTIN serves as a liaison, if you will, between um, folks like the CDC and our community where we take those messages and we really make them resonate um, with our folks. And so the way that we do that is through um, opportunities such as this. Um, we try to raise um, awareness around these very pertinent issues around for our community. Um, we go to community-based uh, organizations, faith-based institutions, historically black colleges and universities across the country, um, trying to raise awareness, um, trying to provide training um, and technical assistance and support um, around how to engage African-Americans on these issues. Um, and so one of the ways that we do our work is through our wonderful subcontractors. We have um, several that are doing um, amazing work and beating the pavement. Um, folks like the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council out in Oakland, uh, California. We also have the Prostate Health Education Network in Boston, um, as well as the University of Alabama. Um, in Birmingham, which does uh, a, amazing work around cancer disparity work. So just wanted to give you a brief, you know, synopsis of NAPTIN. And so thank you again, Patricia, for welcoming um, our team to your show. Absolutely. So oh, then, and I just wanted to point out CDC, is that Centers for Disease Control? or It is. Yes. It's okay. Centers for Disease okay. Control. And NAPTIN is actually funded through three offices with CDC. Mm -hmm. um, we're funded for our tobacco work through the Office of Smoking and Health. Um, we're also funded for our cancer work through uh, DCPC, which is the, um, the Division of Cancer Prevention and Control. Um, and we're also funded through DHAP for our HIV work, which is Division of HIV AIDS and Prevention. Excellent. Wow. Okay. Okay. So who wants to answer that first question um, when it comes to smoking? Crack at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so smoking in general is going down. The rates are going down continuously. When you look at mm -hmm. the rates of smoking among African-Americans versus, you know, the, the rest of the population in the U S there's really not that much of a difference in the smoking rates. So oh. African-Americans smoke a little bit, higher rates than white Americans. However, when you look at the health outcomes of those that smoke, African Americans suffer the worst consequences related to, to smoking tobacco. So higher cancer rates, higher asthma, emphysema, any illness or disease related to cancer, related to smoking, I mean, 
African Americans suffer worse consequences. And on top of that, African Americans <laughs> smoke less than their counterparts. So we smoke less. We start smoking later in life. We right. smoke fewer cigarettes a day. But when it comes to the end of the end of the day, we suffer the worst health consequences of tobacco use. So either, a lot of that has to do with go ahead. So either so are we more susceptible to lung diseases or something, or are we smoking the wrong kind of cigarettes as compared to what other folks smoke? Good question. And I mean, every cigarette's the wrong cigarette. I know. But, That's why I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, you, when you look at the type of cigarettes that African Americans smoke, I mean, I'm, I'll ask you, Patricia, when you think of African American smokers, what brand of cigarette comes to mind? Um, when I was younger, because I never smoked, but it seemed that Cool was the brand and Salem's. Cool. But I don't know. I don't cool, even know. Salem. Are they still in business? Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, they're still in business. Oh, okay. um, and I see one of, one of our viewers um, just wrote something in the chat box. Newports. So yeah, you're absolutely right, oh, Patricia. Cools, okay. Newports. Those are all menthol cigarettes. So okay. when we look at African American smokers, ninety percent, nine out of ten African Americans who smoke use a menthol product. Menthol and what other interesting flavored. Latoya. One easy thing that we always like to remind people is that menthol is a flavor that has been added to tobacco. Okay. And when you smoke menthols, menthol, you know, it's the same kind of stuff you find in peppermint or in throat lozenges. So it literally creates a cooling effect, which makes smoking easier to do for the first time. So when you're a young person, menthol makes it easier for you to start smoking. And then there's a lot of research that demonstrates that when, when you are a menthol smoker, it actually makes it more difficult for you to quit. Oh. So the answer to your question oh. is that because black people are still smoking menthols more often, we have a more difficult time quitting that addiction because menthol is easier to start and harder to quit. Okay, again, as, as a totally non-smoker, I didn't realize, so not all cigarettes have menthol. Menthol is a flavor. So the tobacco industry has been really good at creating varied levels of menthol right. in different products. And so they tailor it depending on their demographic. There are some mm -hmm. that have very, very low or non-existent levels of menthol. But when it comes to those cools and those Newports, that's the signature of those products is that menthol. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a menthol um, at a Newport or a cool, menthol is a characterizing flavor for that brand of cigarette. And like mm -hmm. Latroy mentioned, almost all tobacco products have some level of nicotine. Some don't, mm -hmm. but almost mm -hmm. all have some level because without the nicotine, without the, the menthol, menthol. Mm -hmm. tobacco is just too harsh. So with the yeah. menthol, you get uh, an anesthetic effect. So mm -hmm. it, it numbs yeah. you a little bit. There's a cooling sensation. So almost every product has some level of menthol. But when we look at Newport's Cools, it's a characterizing flavor. So it's act, an actual flavor of the cigarette. Okay. Huh. So what are you guys doing about it in terms of, are, are you enlightening smokers that maybe they should, of course, they should all quit smoking, but is it a matter yeah. of trying, trying to tell them not to smoke menthols? Well, we, we want them to not smoke anything. Yeah, I know. But, <laughs> but being that, you know, we are, our focus is on African-American smokers. 90% of them are smoking menthol flavored cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So our focus is on menthol and other flavors. So when, when we look at our youth, you know, a lot of them, oh, we don't smoke cigarettes. But they're smoking cigarillos, black and milds other tobacco products that have flavors. Um, and what we do, like one of our signature um, initiatives is No Menthol Sunday. And I'll let LaTroya, our communications expert, give a little sure. more info on uh, No Menthol Sunday. So No Menthol Sunday is our national and annual observance day. 
It happens every year in May. This year it's on May 19th. And this is our interfaith effort to get churches and faith communities across the country just to start talking about tobacco. Um, a lot of times pastors will say, oh, no one in our community smokes. Um, this is really a thing of the past. And we help them remember that actually a lot of people, even those who are very active in their faith, can be either closeted smokers or they just have people who are close to them who are still addicted. And so we talk about the role of menthol when it comes to tobacco use, and we really take this day just to get them to talk about it. And that can mean making an announcement from the pulpit, you know, you're the lady who does the announcements or whoever gets up there and just reads the Sunday morning announcements or some of the larger churches may have the scrolling videos above, we'll have those for them. A lot of times other churches will host prayer walks or they'll do a prayer line, like a hotline that you can call to get support. Some communities will have a table in their um, in their vestibule or in their foyer. A lot of times the young people will get together and they'll do skits and things like that to really raise awareness about not only tobacco use, but also about why menthol matters to the African-American community when it comes to um, smoking and tobacco use. And the deal is we take this time not only to get the people in your congregation talking about it, but we hope that they'll really get out into their communities and start to uh, support some of the legislation and some of the, the policies that we want to see change in the community as it relates to the sale and access of mentholated products. And let me just, which I think that we'll go into a little bit. Yeah, let me just add to that. Um, one of the things that I'm really proud of with Napton um, is that through the um, education and awareness that we do um, across the country, through efforts like No Menthol Sunday that Latroya just described, we've been able to influence policy. So we started out in 2013 in the city of Chicago. Um, where we were able to um, work with elected officials as well as community-based organizations and universities um, and other groups to um, um, really wrap around this piece of legislation called the 500-foot buffer zone ordinance, which restricted the sale of flavored tobacco products within 500 feet of a public school, and it included menthol. Um, since that time, we've been able to get similar legislation passed um, across the country. So we've done some amazing work through our partners, um, particularly the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council. Um, so we've seen some traction in Oakland, San Francisco, um, Minneapolis, as well as Duluth, Minnesota. Um, we're also um, seeing some traction in New York City. And so this um, policy has really taken, um, yeah, Duluth. Shannon says Duluth. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we've really seen some traction across the country. Cities large so that um, more communities will, um, like Latreya say, take action on menthol, um, certainly to protect young people as well as communities of color. And let me just add one thing to mm -hmm. that idea of protecting young people. The FDA recognizes that there are several things that that keeps up a tobacco uh, addiction. Number one, you have the marketing and the advertising. So we talk about that on No Menthol Sunday. But number two, you have the flavors. So when it came to getting rid of things like bubble gum and, you know, strawberry flavored tobacco products, they were very strict on getting a lot of those flavors out, but they did not move when it came to tobacco. And we feel like that was an injustice. So that's why, you know, we know that the industry recognizes that the flavors are important if you want to reduce the use of tobacco, but they didn't do it for menthol. So that's why we're going community by community, city by city to educate people and get them to pass these policies. Do you think churches can play a role in getting people to stop smoking? Because I know, um, maybe it was a couple of years ago, uh, White Rock Baptist Church, they got a, a nice grant. Um, didn't have anything to do with smoking, but it was uh, they, they had some health-related programming dealing with healthy eating. But do you uh -huh. think churches should um, get these grants and try to get their population, their congregations to stop smoking? Absolutely. You know, the church has always been a vocal leader in our communities. They've always been highly influential. And sometimes it really just takes an open conversation. Let's say, you know, we need to be there for each other. We need to support one another. And when you have someone in the pulpit saying that this is an important issue, not only does it make people think about it, and especially if that leader is able to connect it to their spiritual values, I mean, it's, it's very important, very effective. Mm -hmm. And you get people supporting one another. This is the time where we really highlight resources that are available. A lot of times people don't know that there's the 1-800-QUIT-NOW phone number that you can call. Something just as simple as putting that out there. Sometimes these congregations are as small as 20. Sometimes they're as big as, as 
several wow. thousands. And so if you can just put that information out there one time, it will definitely make an impact. Hmm. Now, I do know that Durham County here in North Carolina and Duke University both have anti-smoking uh, or rather quit smoking campaigns and, and programs. They're listed in the Durham Skywriter on the health page. But um, I'm hoping that around the country, um, there, you know, other counties and other universities are also helping their uh, citizens to stop smoking as well. Now, I want to point out that Kente mentioned the patch. Is that still being used to um, get people to stop smoking? Is it and is is it really um, is it really helpful? Does it really work? Yes, it's still being used, still being prescribed, and there's a, quite a few different NRTs, nicotine replacement therapies. So the patch is one of them. So mm -hmm. the main, re the only reason you know people continue to smoke when they don't want to is they are addicted to nicotine. Mm -hmm. So with the patch, the patch is put onto your skin, the nicotine is absorbed through your skin. So the, the mechanism that, you know, the, the patch is using is it's still, your body is still getting the nicotine mm -hmm. just without the carcinogens, the tars that you would get from smoking a cigarette. Now, will it work for everybody? No, but there's the patch, there's gums, there's lozenges, there's inhalers, there's medications that actually, um, that you can take to help you quit smoking. Um, I'm actually a former smoker myself. And I, mm. when I worked at Duke actually, and I joined their quit smoking program mm -hmm. um, and got on one of the, um, the medications that are prescribed to help people quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And it worked for me. So, a lot of times it's it's trial and error. Um, cold turkey is awesome if you can stop like that. Some folks yeah. can, some folks can't. So the options are, you know, the nicotine replacement therapies, the pharmacological medications, counseling, you know, and a combination of all three of those together is what's been proven to work the best. And again, when we talk about African-American smokers, we really need to look at interventions that are specific to African-American smokers. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at the rates of menthol smokers, it's not, you know, oh, one day black folks decided let's all smoke menthols. <laughs> the big tobacco industry targeted black communities way back in the 50s and 60s with menthol cigarettes because, you know, they did their homework and African-Americans, for whatever reason, showed a small, um, slight preference for mm -hmm. menthol and big tobacco took that and ran with it and here we are you know 50 60 years later 90 mm. percent of african americans use menthol cigarettes yeah. so when it comes to to african americans and cessation efforts or quit quitting smoking efforts you know targeted cessation efforts you know need to match the targeting of our community. So one of the other things that we offer is a, and we, you can get it through the CDC as well, is a targeted cessation tool called, um, oh guys, what's the name of it? Pathways to Freedom. Pathways to Freedom. Pathways to Freedom is a mm -hmm. booklet as well as a DVD that addresses specific African-American cultural attributes that will, you know, like the church, for example, there's just different things in the African-American community that, you know. It's just a little bit more is. tailored and a little bit more relevant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And one of the biggest things, so on May 19th, when we do No Menthol Sunday, we ask churches, you know, when you register to participate in this event, we give them a toolkit. And the toolkit gives you tons of ideas for ways that you can send out information to your community. That, of course, includes the quit line, which allows you to actually get some of that NRT that Michael was talking about. They offer you a quit coach, someone to help you along your way, but also that's how you can get access to um, some of those CDC approved cessation tools like the patch and all of those things. And the other thing is we, re we point you in the direction of Pathways to Freedom so that you can get that from us. It comes in a booklet form and also comes as a DVD. It's a great video to watch just to help you start your journey. That is great. Now, is that only available here in Durham County or across the country? Nationwide. Across the country. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, I wanted to talk more about cigarettes, but um, you wanted to keep this to 30 minutes. 
And I we can go over. We'll go over. I, I want to <laughs> talk about this this thing that's new to me, vaping. Yeah. Yes. Um, not an approved cessation tool. It does not help. Is not effective for quitting. By the way. I mean, when I first heard about it, that's exactly what they were saying. They say it's a great, safe replacement for cigarette smoking. Um, it sounds like they were wrong. So they were lying, actually. Um, yes. <laughs> so we have to remember that all of the all of the uh, marketing tactics that are being currently used for vaping was previously used when they were trying to sell tobacco um, in the form of cigarettes in the first place. So all the oh, same wow. tactics apply. When mm. the industry set out to do the e-cigarettes, the mm. electronic cigarettes, they did not have cessation in mind. That was not their original intent. Mm. But later on, they found this is a good way to sell the product. We'll sell it as a way to help you quit. But there's wow. already documents showing that the uh, e-cigarette companies were not intending to try to help people get healthy through their products. It was just what they were creating. Um, they just dis decided and realized that selling it as a cessation tool would make really good sense for marketing purposes, but that's not the original intent. And it is not approved an approved method for quitting because it's not proven. Um, in fact, most of the people who are trying to use it as a cessation tool, 50% of them are just dual users. They use both products. Okay. Now I was talking to Michael about this before, when we were setting up this interview that, um, the FDA has has threatened more than once um, in September of last year and then in January of this year to take um, the e-cigarettes, and that's the same as vaping, right? Um, yes. This, yeah, yeah, to take them off the shelves because too many kids are, are using um, these e-cigarettes. I guess they didn't go through with their threat, but the threat was there. Um, <laughs> and like I said, they did it more than once. Um, so what's going on with this? Um, apparently the teens are really taking to it and the FDA seems to be concerned. Yes, well, there's definitely I hear, laugh I hear laughter. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe that they're concerned. I don't know if that was my laughter. They're okay. concerned. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just gonna talk and, a little bit about the threat ahead. and then yeah. uh, my question yeah, just- Please, uh, please do, yeah. yes. Yeah, because it is basically an epidemic. I mean, hmm. uh, 78. Uh, the, the numbers have just skyrocketed. So among high schoolers, um, the percentage shot up about 78% of users for high schoolers using um, e-cigarettes, as well as about 48% for middle schoolers. So there is middle a school. real, yes, among middle schoolers. So there is a real threat. And I wanted my colleagues to kind of get into um, some of the e-cigarette products, particularly Juul, um, and how um, young people are using this small device um, as a way to get their nicotine boost. I'm hearing that teachers are thinking that these little devices are, are like uh, thumb drives because they're just, right. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So they're designed to look like uh, a flash drive. So it's very high tech. And that's, so wrong. that's not by, it's not by accident. If you, um, look at who actually designed it, the folks that designed it actually came from, um, the Apple tech world. Um, so these are very technical people that designed this product. And when mm -hmm. we look at high school, like, like Shantae said, um, the number one tobacco product being used in schools is e-cigarettes, namely Juul. Um, wow. In North Carolina, that's the second product being used after e-cigarettes is cigars and cigarillos. So the black and mild, the, the um, Swisher sweets, the flavors, and um, the again the, the percentage of high school kids and middle school kids that are using these products has like just skyrocketed in the last right. three years, so, thanks to Jewel. Thanks to Jewel, it, it, it was almost like a single-handed effort on the part of Jewel. The smoking rates, like you said, when we first started this conversation, had gone all the way down, and then within about a year or two, they went all the way back up. And again, you've got to think that you have these really tech savvy minds thinking about how to boost, how to, you know, launch a, a product that would be really appealing to young people who are most comfortable with things that look like technology, mm -hmm. like your thumb drives. So understand that these things are all very purposeful when they right. hit the market. In fact, so we have it's sold as an adult product, right? E-cigarettes sure. and jewels. It's supposed to be for adults, especially for adults who want to quit smoking. Yeah. But the reality is that the larger percentage of their users are actually young people. 
So how are the young people purchasing them? Are, are they sending the, their older brothers and sisters to the stores for them? Or are the stores actually selling these products to, to kids? They're yeah, not supposed to. Yeah, they're not supposed right. to. All right. So, of course, like now there's laws in place, at least here in North Carolina, there's laws in place where, you know, you have to be 18 and above to purchase these products. But we all know how that how that works. You know, even, yeah, but, just like but, with alcohol, kids are going to get are. their hands on it. But they have and, been they have been good in the past though, sending um decoys, you know, like yeah, young looking yeah. people to to make purchases and then of course and they're the not store. getting carded. Yeah. The FDA just did a sweep across the country and found that a lot of these stores are doing a terrible job when it comes to e-cigarettes mm -hmm. and carding yeah. and making mm -hmm. sure. So it's the same problems yeah. they had before. Mm -hmm. exactly. Besides that, they're and getting you can them buy online. online. Yeah, you can buy them online. I was looking at the the list, I was looking at a popular vaping site and it's colorful. So I suppose it's it's appealing to kids. The, exactly. the, the top flavors, now listen to these top flavors, Rocket Popsicle, Mixed Tropical Fruit and Fruit fruit Cereal and Ice Cream. Which reminds yeah, me so, of the trick, the tricks are for kids with the, with the, right. the rabbit. But it's you know? not who, for who's, kids. Who's that marketed towards? Uh, the same kids that cereals marketing to <laughs> the, 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 exactly. the young the young folks. But let me ask you right. this: and Someone said sounds kind of good in the comments. Exactly, it sounds tasty. It sounds mm. delicious. Yeah, but I have to ask you though. I'm sure people are asking young folks why they're smoking. Why are they smoking nowadays? Because back in the day, like when my parents were alive and they were smoking, um, my mom said that she smoked because she was nervous. And she didn't smoke all day because she was a school teacher, but she mm -hmm. would get home and she would like, you know, that's actually what killed her uh, with cigarette smoking. Um, but I'm just saying, why are the kids, are they nervous? Are they, <laughs> are they filled with stress? I mean, or is it, is it marketed as something cool? Yes. Yes. That's the marketing, it. it's the marketing and it's, you know, if your, your peer group, they're doing it. Oh, I'll try it too. So, you know, when it's we talk about anything that's supposed to be for adults, mm -hmm. it's a part mm -hmm. of the strategy. Yeah. Now, and when you look at social media, how social media plays a role in the whole vaping epidemic, you can go on YouTube and there's, um, <clears throat> they call them cloud contests. So, I mean, the things that you can do with these devices is amazing. They, they blow smoke or they blow vapor. And it's just actually it's an aerosol. But it's not water. Yeah, okay. Check. It's an aerosol. It's not water vapor. It's an aerosol. Okay. And it, it, just, it can make all these shapes and, you know, designs. And it's, it's, it's cool. So now you have a whole generation of folks that look at smoking with disgust. Oh, my God. You're, I can't believe you smoke. Yeah. And then they pull out a jewel and, you know, take a rip off the jewel because it's not smoking. But yeah. in actuality, there's a question that came on the comments too. Like, what are the ingredients? It's the same ingredients as combustible cigarettes. Not in the same amounts, mm -hmm. but a lot of the same ingredients that are in a cigarette are in an e-cigarette, are in a jewel. Now, um, I know vaping add, is... Add, yeah, I'm sorry. You add to that the, the propylene glycol, which causes the, you know, the, the, the big plume of, of vapor so the, the heat you have to take into consideration the components of the the, the, the device mm -hmm. so those are metal that metal breaks down and it gets you know absorbed into your body as well yep. so there are definitely so it, you have to look at it levels right yeah tobacco a, a regular cigarette let's say has you know all this poison up here Whereas an e-cigarette has some of the same ones, but it's not as much. Um, sometimes what I like to, how I like to phrase it is, would you rather jump off of a 50-story building or a 10-story building? You're going to get hurt either way. It's flat either way. Yes, yes. Right. So right. the idea that, um, so one of the biggest, I guess, selling points of the e-cigarette is that it's supposed to be so much safer. But remember that if to, if cigarettes is your standard for not safe, it's a pretty it's pretty low standard. And yeah. a lot of these young people really do think that e-cigarettes 
um, emit harmless water vapor and they don't know what's inside of the device because it's not regulated. But the other thing is a lot of them don't know that it has nicotine in it and higher levels of nicotine that are in cigarettes. So they're getting addicted really fast. They have no idea what they're ingesting. And that's why they're so apt to get to get into it because they think it's safer. They think it's not cigarettes. They don't know it's their, that the nicotine is the quality that makes it addictive. And they have no idea that this water vapor is not harmless water vapor. I, I wanted to ask, ask about the nicotine because we don't expect young people, especially kids in middle school, to know about past anti-smoking campaigns. We, we don't expect them to know that. So whose job is it? I hope it, you're going to say it's our job. Um, <laughs> so whose job is it to tell these kids, especially if you don't even know they're they're, they're vaping because unlike smoking herb, you're not going to smell um, smell it if your kid is vaping in the bedroom, right? You right. might not even be aware that your kid is smoking. So Correct. how can we teach the young folks that what they're doing is is not really cool and that um, they, I don't even know, can, can they get cancer? That's another question. Be, because are, are the numbers, I, I know vaping is relatively new but do we have the numbers yet showing that you can get cancer? We don't have those numbers, but we do have numbers that show that there are levels of carcinogens in the e-cigarettes. So like you okay. said, we don't have the long-term studies to see what the long-term health effects are, but there are um, carcinogens in e-cigarette vapor. And just a shout out to Patricia for using the word herb. I haven't heard that phrase in um, <laughs> <laughs> <Body> corner, <laughs> Which is but, also bad for you kids. Right. And they're actually and also, yeah. they're you they're vaping marijuana now as well. So like you said, oh, no. if, if a kid is in their room <laughs> with a vape product and a parent walks in. It may, it's, it may smell like some Victoria's Secrets lotion. It's got a sweet smell to it mm -hmm. that dissipates very quickly. There's no lingering odor. So whether you're vaping a, a nicotine juice, what they call it, it e-juice, a nicotine juice mm -hmm. or a juice that contains THC from marijuana, there's mm -hmm. really no smell. And, and with these products... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Victoria. I just wanted to say that the problem a lot of times is that parents don't know what's going on. And that's why events like No Menthol Sunday is so important because this is a time that we educate parents about these kinds of products. We talk about menthol, we talk about tobacco, we talk about Juul, and we talk about all of those things so that people can kind of wise up and start thinking in that direction. Um, I did want to make one point though about Juuling and e-cigarettes. When it comes to the black community, those products have not really infiltrated our community as much. This is still kind of like a white kid problem, you know, and that's just the, the fact of the matter. Mm -hmm. And so the FDA was really quick to jump and snatch those flavors right out of, of e-cigarettes when they saw that it was affecting the general population of kids. But a lot of news articles have been coming at general population. Mm -hmm. But the um, a lot of news articles have been coming out lately pointing out the fact that the FDA was very quick to pull out flavors for e-cigarettes and Juul when they saw that it was affecting the, the this big business of Juul. But when it comes to the products that are still most prevalent in our community, the Cigarillos, the Swisher Sweets, the Black and Miles, those flavors are still there. Those products are still cheap, which is why our community probably hasn't adopted e-cigarettes as much. It's a little bit more expensive, but those products are still cheap. They're still heavily marketed you know they've got every black celebrity the cardi b's and everybody else having events sponsored by these these um organizations mm -hmm. and so the deal is that's where our real problem is still and we're trying to stay one step ahead of jeweling and e-cigarettes to keep it out of our community because what we don't want like michael said there's not long-term research so what we don't want is to be the guinea pigs you know for black people to adopt this and then they find out 30 years down the line, exactly. you know, we, we just do not need to be the experiment. Wow. Right. So each of you, um, I want you to take turns, pretend like I'm 15 years old. <laughs> tell me why I shouldn't smoke and tell me why I should not vape. In other words, break it down. Okay. <laughs> Michael, you can go first because uh, I think okay. we have. <clears throat> okay. So 
why you shouldn't smoke, why you shouldn't vape. So I'm gonna, so I, I, I've raised a teenager, so I've actually had this conversation before. Oh, um, it was okay. a few years ago. Now I've got another one coming up that's gonna be a teenager. So what I, what I would say is one, and really when it comes to cigarettes and teenagers, you're not gonna find a whole lot of teenagers that really are into smoking anyways. But what I would say is, okay, I'm looking at the flavors, the, the black and miles, the cigarillos, the vaping. All of these products contain nicotine. So you may want to, you know, enjoy it with your friends, but the nicotine will actually delay your development. Your frontal, your prefrontal cortex develops until you're well into your 20s. The prefrontal cortex controls your decision making, your risk taking. So you don't want to, you know, be addicted to this product that is going to leave you susceptible to, to making bad decisions. It's going to leave you susceptible to future addictions to other products. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know that may sound really, you know, technical and, and, and that was good. Maybe. Yeah of their head but um some, sometimes that works and then if that doesn't work we bring out the tips campaign pictures okay <laughs> the, the what tips campaign, the tip campaign is a cdc funded campaign where they bring in former smokers who have suffered terrible consequences and there the there's posters there's internet um pictures there's commercials where people you know their chest is cut from their throat to their to their navel from surgeries mm -hmm. at the voice boxes you know oh yeah, half, yeah. Of their, half of their face has been removed because of tongue cancer oh um so if, it, if it comes down to scare tactics maybe that's what we'll use but i think <laughs> just really letting them know hey this is what's really in this product letting them know that there's rat poison that there's you know exhaust like the old know, campaign. These, it's the old one yeah, right you know, right old, back in the day. um and then when you look at you know youth african americans other um subpopulations lgbt latinos tobacco specifically targets them to take advantage of them Amazing. so if you can get if you can get at that part of their 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 soul like you're being targeted What's, what, what do teenagers not want? To, they don't want to be like, oh, you're a teenager, so, you know, this, 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 this. That's what Big Tobacco is doing. Mm. Our, we know that these kids, we Profiling. Big Tobacco needs you. They need you to continue. Mm. Wow. Because Because all their old customers died. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Product, they sell a product that kills their clientele. So they continually have to recruit new smokers or new vapors because so of the I have a 15 year old sister and I have tried to sort of put little things in her ear, but you know, young people, they don't like to listen. But one thing I will, the one thing I would say is that tobacco products kill more African Americans than homicide, suicide, police brutality, um, car HIV. accidents and HIV combined. Okay. Mm. That's a lot mm. of us. And the same wow. people who were selling you tobacco are now the same people who are trying to sell you e-cigarettes and jewel. Right. And I would just say, listen, they know they are, they know all about you. Do not get God. Don't mm. get God. And let me just say this too, that tobacco use is still the number one preventable cause of disease and death in this country. And we're talking about a product, um, like Michael stated that has about 4,000 um, chemicals in this particular product. And mm. so after all, this cigarettes, you know, it impacts your brain, your cardiovascular system, your lungs, your kidneys, and the like. And one thing that I like to tell young people is that because um, certain um, aspects of tobacco use, um, they think that death is way off. You know, it's something that, okay, if I smoke now, it's not going to impact me now. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that um, tobacco use does impact. Um, for example, um, for young African-American men, we talk a lot about erectile dysfunction. Um, that is something that can impact you um, right away, um, not something that's long off. So we do try to tell our young people that 
um, tobacco use is, is a serious issue, particularly in our community, um, but there are certain aspects of it that can impact your health right away. Wow. And, Ken, and Kente said that would do it for him. So, mm -hmm. yes. And I also just really quick, um, it's, it's already scrolled past, but someone said that they actually vape a non nicotine product, um, which they do exist. However, studies have shown that when um, they've taken these no nicotine e juices and actually tested them, lo and behold, they do contain nicotine. And if the, if the product itself doesn't contain nicotine, you're still ingesting those other chemicals that have not been approved for human consumption via inhalation. So these flavors mm -hmm. are approved to be ingested, say in your right. food or in candy and gum, but how does the body react to it when it's inhaled. So yeah. the, the way your lungs work is completely different than the way your digestive your system works. works. And your stomach has a has a dedicated exit strategy, whereas your lungs really don't have that in place. Ooh, I never heard anybody say that. Wow. Okay. That's that's really scary <laughs> right there. That's yeah, really you and your stomach is much stronger. Your stomach is much stronger mm -hmm. than your than your lungs were ever meant. To be, wasn't supposed to process that stuff. Wow. I really appreciate your being on the show. I know you wanted to keep it to around 30 minutes. So how can we get more information? Because I, I really appreciate that you have so much information for people who, who need it. Yeah, I think I think we could have gone on for another couple hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, um, you can reach, like I said, uh, we're here in Durham. Um, I'm not sure where our, our viewers are right now, but if you're Everywhere. in Durham, yeah. So, uh, our website is napton, N-A-A-T-P-N dot O-R-G. Um, and we can put that in the, in the credits when, when we roll the credits. Um, but again, N-A-A-T-P-N dot O-R-G is our website. Um, and then once you get to our website, our emails, phone numbers are there. Um, and you can follow us at Black Body Health, Health online. Can everybody Black see my Body Health. Awesome. Yeah. Black Body Health. I want one of those on Twitter. Shirts. Yes. And Black and Body what? Health is you can follow us, like Latroya said, online. But that's all of our social media platforms. So we're on Facebook as well as Instagram and Twitter. Awesome. And I like the shirts that, that the other two are wearing, that Shante and Michael are wearing. Two woke to yeah. smoke. So Too Woke to Smoke came about um, oh, as a collaboration with the Mecklenburg County Health Department, as well as Youth Empowered Solutions. And um, we did this at the CIAA tournament um, where we spoke with uh, the audience about exactly the same thing that we just spoke about for the last 45 minutes. Again, that's another one of the ways that we get the information out there is that we uh, attend these type of events uh, across the nation the CIAA basketball tournament, Essence Festival. Um, we attend um, LGBT prides across the country for our HIV work. So again, what we try to do is take the information to where black folks are gonna be. Okay, I like that, I like that a lot. And, and one um, just cautionary tale. I know a lot of times when, and I'm sure you've heard this too, and you try to convince people to stop smoking and to tell them how dangerous it is, I know you've heard this, but they'll say, well, you got to die from something, right? I know you've heard it, right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Die from... My mom used to say that all the time. And we used to try to get her to stop smoking, and she just couldn't do it. She smoked. She stopped smoking right before she died, like a week before she mm -hmm. died. But I just want to say, she used to say that all the time. But you know what? It took me a long time to shake this. But even though she, she had this false bravado, you know, well, you got to die from something, you know. The last look she gave me before she died was fear. Once you know it's time, that's yeah. scary. It's nothing yeah. to play around with. So even yeah. though you have all this bravado, when your time is up, you're, you're not going to be very happy about it. It took me a long yeah. time to shake that that uh, vision out of my, my, my memory and to remember my mom the way I wanted to remember her. Because that was a look I had never seen before. Mm. Fear. Abject yeah. fear. It's yeah. nothing to play with. And, 
So yeah. uh, I, I, I can almost guarantee that a, a lot of us have had that very same experience because yeah. I my father died as a result of cigarette smoking and mm. one of the last conversations we had was very similar. He said something something along the lines of he was apologizing and you know mm. saying that he had been slowly killing himself over mm. all those years. Mm. You know, so it's 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 it doesn't just affect the person, it affects the family as well. For sure. And that's another thing that another thing that you can that we use when we're when we're you know telling folks, you know, well yeah, you may not smoke, but you know, somebody in your family may smoke and it's not just affecting them, it's affecting the whole family. Secondhand right. smoke, third hand smoke. That's that's something we didn't talk about. Can people be affected by secondhand smoke with vaping though? Yes. So Oh, okay. The exact same way that you can be affected by secondhand smoke, you can be affected by secondhand vaping. So that vapor that is exhaled, if you're in the room, you're going to inhale it as well. And then again, because it's, it's an aerosol, those, you know, microscopic molecules will settle, you know, on your furniture and your car, on the curtains, on the floor. Mm -hmm. So all that, again, because there's no long term research yet. We don't know what the, the long-term effects of that can be. Right. And and Kente is and Kente is pointing out that um, people have died of lung cancer exactly. who never never smoke because their spouse. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. So I want to thank but you. But if you want to have us back again, we'll we'd be glad to yeah. come back again. <laughs> absolutely. You can come back as often as you want. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. So thanks again for being on the show. We have had Shante Keith, we have had Michael Scott, and Latroya Hester, and um, Shante and Michael are in Durham, and Latroya is in Atlanta, ATL. Very exciting. You're my first, my first Atlanta guest, by the way. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for being on the show. So I'm going to end the show here, but. Technically speaking, I'm not going anywhere. So if you want to actually, if any of you want to stay and chat with someone who might want to come on camera and ask a question or whatever, we can do that. So I will officially say goodbye, but don't leave just yet. So let me click on the recording button and say thank you so much for watching TV Skywriter. And be sure to read Durham, North Carolina's, uh, Durham, North Carolina's online community paper, the Durham Skywriter at DurhamSkywriter.com. Thank you.